Hello and welcome to WebLearning with Knowledge Shared. In today's video, I'll show you another video for my series on how to do things differently in Linux. One of the things that in Linux that you need to do is always edit files, change them, write different code. And this is usually you do either with different commands like VI or Nano or other different Linux programs. But you, when you're running WSL under Windows, you have other options and one of them is quite strong if you know how to use it. If you're a programmer, I'm sure you know Notepad++ or if you're anyone that writes some code, this is a free software to use and it's very powerful if you know how to use it. So let me download the 64-bit. I click yes on everything. Okay, so how do we get all the way from Notepad into for example, Raspberry. Let me connect to one of my raspberries. Okay, so now I can see I'm reaching one of my raspberries. So how can I get from one to the other? Well, that's quite easy. All you need to do at one point, you need to click plugins, plugin admin, search for NPP, NPP, FTP, highlight, and click right here, install. Click yes. Okay, so how does this work? If we click on plugins, now we, we can see there is a new NPP FTP. And we can show NPP FTP window. There is a, also here a small icon that you can use to show this window. In this window, you have this small icon for settings. Then click on profile settings. Then we can add a new profile. For example, this is my Pi as 4. My host name is my IP address and I'm connecting over SFTP. Now this is really important to have the SSH enable but as you can see I'm able to connect through SSH so this is not an issue. Username Pi and password is the password for my Raspberry Pi. Now if you're connecting to the home directory of the Pi, then you'll be able co to connect directly to this folder. If you're going to connect as root, because some of the files you cannot change them because you need to run under the root command, then you'll see this folder structure. Let me show you what I mean. So I have this, I click close, and then clicking this icon, I can see that I can connect to the my Pi res 4. It's asking me regarding the trust. And here I can see all the folders. Now to change any file, for example, if I go my Adafruit Python LCD examples, I can click on any file. As you can see here, it connects and it uploads the file. There is another small window at the bottom I can use. This is show message window. This shows me all the connections, if they're successful or not successful, or if there are any issues. Now I can change the file, edit the file. You can see it, it shows as a programmer's text with all the colors and everything. This is in Python, so it also recognizes Python language. And if I do any change, you see now the disk is red, so it means I made the changes. If I click save, you'll see it will connect and will update the file directly into the Raspberry. Like this, you can open multiple files, you can change them, you can edit them, you can, do, you can view them, you can do whatever you want. Now, if I try to connect as a root, I'll do root test. Again, the same IP address, connection SFTP, username root, password. And now I'm not changing the initial remote directory. Let's try to connect to this. As you can see, I'm seeing the root directory of the Raspberry Pi. In order to see the home directory, I'll need to change this under profile settings. Again, going to root test, then I can do home and pi for this directory and finish it with the forward slash. Click close, I'll disconnect and connect again to the root test. And now I can see the home directory of the Pi. 
but I'm connected as admin. To enable SSH on root, this is not that straightforward. If you are not able to log in as root, what you'll need to do, you need to change the configuration of the SSH for root login. You'll have to do that annually. So you need to do sudo nano etc folder ssh ssh hd sshd underscore config. You'll need to scroll down here to permit root login. Most likely you'll see this blue line prohibit password but you need to change the prohibit password to yes. Of course, you'll need to move the hash sign. That's it. When you finish, you click Control X, yes, and save the file. The minute you do this, you need to restart the SSH. This you can do by System Control Restart SSH HD. The minute you do this, the SSH will restart, and then you can log in as root. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to click and subscribe so you have notification. I'll upload new videos on how to do things with Linux.